been organized by Justice for Solly, with the immense solidarity from the Shared family, the Spalding family, and the Tudory family, and a little bit of support from Solidarity Against Violence. Together with supporters, families are here gathered outside the Toronto South Detention Centre to raise their voices in a united call for mental health rights within the provincial justice system. Today we will be hearing directly from the families of Jordan Sheard, Sean Spalding, Ijaz Choudhury, and Solomon Fakiri, who were all suffering from mental illness and who lost their lives at the hands of the justice system. Today, we will also be hearing from experts from the field, including criminal defense lawyer Kofi Ashampong, disability advocate and founder of Disability Justice Network, Ontario's Sarah Jema is not going to be able to join us today because of another affair, but we send love to Sarah, and executive director from Across Boundaries Mental Health, Asifa Sarang. I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing anybody's name. Please do tell me and I will correct that. My name is Rochelle, and I am so thankful that you're all here today. Um, just before we get started, can people hear me well all the way back? Is the sound system back there? We're good? We're clear? Awesome. So we want to thank each and every one of you for coming out today to join us for this rally for mental health rights within the prison system. We are happy to see all your faces today, but we only want to see so much of them because we are still in strange pandemic times. So if you, for whatever reason, need some more um, personal protective equipment, we've got some masks, some gloves, we've got hand sanitizer, and the rest back over there. Um, so do your best to kind of keep space from people and to honor people's needs for that bit of space, but uh, thank you for being here today and taking care of each other. Um, there is also some free food and some water back there. There's some salty snacks and some sweet snacks and some homemade snacks and a whole bunch of uh, liquids to make sure that we stay hydrated and keep our blood sugar going at levels that keep us here and focused. Um, if you have any questions today about where to find things or what's going on, there are a couple people and, um, you know, one in the tent back there, one with their arm up over here who are wearing an armband that's bright like mine. And so if you have any questions or if you see any, you know, guards or police officers or anybody like that, just flag one of those folks down and they'll uh, make sure to help you get what you need or get the right people to talk to the people who are here. Um, a couple other things that are really important to say. We have invited you here to join us today in assembling on the outside of this jail so that we can unite in taking direct action against these terrible prison systems that are places where people of any type should not be locked behind bars, but where in particular people who suffer from mental illness should not be locked away. Um, we are going to be streaming things today over Facebook Live and recording things. And that's because this is part of a campaign, an ongoing campaign. This is the second in a stop that uh, Justice for Sully is doing at a number of prisons, trying to give solidarity to prisoners who are working on the inside for better conditions, trying to get the word out. That said, we all know what it means to be part of movements that are scrutinized. So please, if you are not directly the media, paying attention to what's happening over here with the speakers, if you're not um, somebody who you know has an express purpose, don't take photos just of random people here. If you're going to say somebody has a great sign, just go up to them and do the human thing and just ask if it would be okay to take that photo and if you have intention to put it say on a website or someplace public also ask for consent with that so this is a public event but we also really want to honor people's right to privacy and to safety and um, so we're asking everybody to work together to honor that um, one last really important thing before we get started today talking about why we're here and why families are coming together in this movement to build a capacity for us to resist the incarceration of our loved ones and especially the incarceration of those who suffer from mental illness. And that is starting from a place of recognizing where it is that we stand. Um, before we talk about the terrible prison, it's really actually important to think about how we've all come to be here, how we've come to be situated on this land. Because we are gathered on land that is today, has always been and will for perpetuity be Indigenous land. 
Since contact indigenous people have been captured, imprisoned, and killed on their own land. Since contact indigenous people have been resisting, mobilizing, and somehow surviving occupation of their lands. We recognize the long history, enduring presence, and ongoing struggles of indigenous peoples on these lands. We recognize and honor that under colonial occupation and within the context of white supremacy, indigenous cultures and communities have and continue to experience horrific degrees of economic, political, legal, cultural, and interpersonal violence. We recognize that these violences include, but are not limited to, widespread prejudice and discrimination, racially motivated assault, mass murder and disappearances, pronounced police brutality, extraordinarily high rates of incarceration, impoverishment, displacement, linguicide, and genocide. We recognize the rights to self-determination, to sovereignty, to self-preservation, and to self-defense of indigenous people over their own lives, communities, cultures, and territories. We recognize the reality that colonial occupation of these lands is an ongoing project which results in allowing prosperity and privileges to settlers to this land named Canada by its occupiers rather than honoring, providing for, and protecting the indigenous people of this land. We recognize that under colonialism, decolonization mobilizations, indigenous justice and sovereignty movements, and indigenous people and their cultures themselves have been criminalized. We recognize the necessity for all settlers to support indigenous struggle and seek an end to the cultural carcerality of white supremacist colonialism. We recognize and offer our respect and deepest gratitudes for the opportunity to live, work, play, gather, and organize on this part of Turtle Island. And we understand that it is our responsibility to be diligent and mindful stewards of this land. We recognize that actions rather than simple words are necessary if respect, reconciliation, and reparations are to be sincerely offered to the indigenous peoples of this land. And as such, we recognize that offering a land acknowledgement is only one small step forward. We recognize that building concrete, long-term, and dedicated relationships with the indigenous peoples of this land and asking them how we can best show up, show reverence, and honor our responsibilities is necessary. We honor all of the creatures and original peoples of this beautiful place. We thank this land, these waters, this air, and the fire that feeds and warms us. We are here today to talk about some very, very important political issues, but it is crucial that in all the things that we do on these territories, that we remember that first occupational wound, that first act of carcerality on these territories, where an occupying force came in and told the others what to do with their bodies, their time, their land, their families, their communities, and their cultures, and what has been set off from there on these territories, entrenching this entire culture with a carcerality that is particularly racist, that is particularly ableist. So in 2016, Suleiman Fakiri was brutally killed by the guards at the Central East Correctional Center, otherwise known as the Lindsay Super Jail. For the Fakiri family, his loss was and remains indescribably agonizing. But somehow, the Fakiri family found and cultivated strength in each other, in their faith, in their community, and their deep love for Suleiman and they decided to harvest their grief in order to feed resistance. They set out to seek justice for Sully and justice for all those killed at the hands of state agents, as well as justice for those who suffer from mental illness who become entangled in an unjust justice system. They began organizing, inviting other families to organize and connected with people and organizations who are passionate about prisoner justice, mental health justice, and holding the state to account. Suleiman's brutal killing by the guards at the Central East Correctional Center sparked a national movement addressing the treatment of individuals who have mental health issues, who end up 
implicated in the very unjust justice system. The Justice for Solo movement has been demanding transparency and accountability against the guards who are responsible for Solomon's violent death. They've also been mobilizing, pulling together all the pieces that need to come to the table to create a grassroots movement of people who have a lot in common. Unfortunately, that thread is usually the loss of someone that we love. We gather today in gratitude and in recognition of the courageous, compassionate, and determined hearts and spirits of the Fakiri family. We offer them our thanks for their leadership, their vulnerability, and their strength. We gather in gratitude and in recognition of all the families who have lost loved ones in prisons, who have somehow found the strength to seek justice for their dead. We honor and we thank the families of Sean Spaulding, Jordan Sheard, Ijaz Chudri, being here with us today and we honor and recognize all of the families of those killed in prisons or at the hands of state members whose grief has remained so striking that the most important work that can be done at this time is endeavoring personal healing all of these families matter equally and are part of this very important movement we want to offer our deepest condolences to all of the families and communities to declare our solidarity with the projects of prisoner justice and mental health justice, and to commit to taking action to dismantle a prison system where mentally ill people who need medical care are locked away and denied what they need, where the incarcerated languish and have to beg for and starve themselves to seek attainment of their most basic human rights, and where guards sometimes kill with impunity. We're here today because this institution, the Toronto Salt Detention Centre, is a place where those detained and incarcerated on the inside have been mobilizing for years, just like prisoners across this province, across this country, and across the world, organizing from the inside, trying to attain the most basic human rights. We're here to support and amplify the demands of inmates here. We're also supporting and amplifying the demands of hunger striking prisoners who've taken direct action to improve their circumstances recently at the Central East Correctional Center where Solomon was killed, the Ottawa Carlton Detention Center, and most recently at the Milton Jail. Prisoner and advocacy groups dedicated to racial justice and prison abolition have been fighting alongside with prisoners for months and months and months to ensure that prisoners receive full access to time out of their jail cells, yard time, showers, visitation, programming, health and mental health care, free phone calls, sanitation, and personal protection supplies, and other basic necessities. These are really, really, really simple demands, and we want them fulfilled for every prisoner who are stuck behind these bars, and we want them fulfilled for every prisoner in every jail across these lands. But people should not be in these jails, and certainly people with mental illness should not be incarcerated in places where people who come in with quote-unquote good mental health are likely to have their mental health eroded. Going to prison is considered to be a social determinant of mental health, which means you can go in here feeling all right, but the chances of you coming out not feeling well go up and up and up, right? So even if people are lucky enough to kind of go in feeling strong, places like this destroy hearts and minds. And so we need to stand in solidarity with the people who are asking for water, for access to their families, for books so that they can actually learn about their own legal rights and maintain a level of solidarity with all prisoners, no matter what they've done to be behind these, jar, uh, these bars. Because it is our solidarity with the movements for prisoners' rights in connection with everyone here's belief that people who suffer from mental illness should not even be behind bars that in part has us here today. We're also here today because we need to work together towards a world where people who experience mental illness also get to enjoy their fulsome human rights and dignities and have access to the kinds of supports that they need. For that to happen, we need justice, healthcare, compassion, destigmatization, harm reduction, nonviolent advocacy, and approach 
an economic investment in the resources necessary for people who suffer from mental illness to get the help that they need when they're in crisis so that they never, ever, ever have to encounter police and so that they never risk being sent to a prison like this one. Because we know from the tragic stories of so many people that we have loved that when human beings who are in mental health crisis or who live consistently with difficult or disruptive mental health diagnoses are sent to jail, far too often they end up dead. The families of the dead are left to grieve the unfathomable loss of their loved ones while at the same time being confronted by a justice system that protects police and prisons and prison staff rather from due scrutiny and accountability. Finally, we are here today because there's a call being made out there asking for the denouncing, the divesting from, the disarming and the defunding of police because police keep killing our loved ones in the street. But at this exact and same moment, there are plans in work by the Ontario government and the so-called Canadian government to invest millions, millions of dollars more into building prisons and furthering the apparatus and resource of the carceral state. So continuing to incarcerate more and more people in the works, which means that more and more people who struggle with mental illness will be put behind bars instead of receiving the compassionate medical help that they deserve. More humans will be caged. So we must organize also to defend prisons. So I just want to thank you all for being here and listening to these introductory words. We have a number of speakers today. If you're just arriving, I just want to point out one more time that there's lots of water and there's lots of food. It's quite hot out. So.